Okay, here we are again. I'll just get through the second part. Now, first part, I just mentioned I went through my brother's bag. And I realised I hadn't quite finished, so I was looking for my passport. My brother passed away last January the 5th. He had schizophrenia, was institutionalised, was in a community house. How he got in there was when he was 18... The devil had his foot on the accelerator. So you could imagine telling an ambulance driver that and he got assessed and he basically has been institutionalised all his life. The Lord had been speaking to me recently that the word I got basically at the beginning of last year was acceleration. He went into the system accelerating and he told us clearly it was the devil. And he went out of this hell hole, this trap, accelerating into a door and fell back dead. Acceleration. Got that? Here's the bag. There was this hive, like a bee. just turn my jug off and I can show you the video again. I'm just recapping on part one. So, there's your hive. That shape. That's what we get herded into. The truth is in detectives. In my bathroom dream. They come in the top and they're all mingled in here and the, this opens there's a sound. I'm in there in the back. I've seen something on the internet and I have an ominous feeling. I warn them because they start shuffling through like the hive. And this is a place of no return. There is no coming back. I saw it again. Jonathan Cleck showed it. There were arrows. It was like a flowchart for the corona when it was corona you go into the system first contact then they find out all the rest of your contacts you think you're going to come out you play their bloody game and you don't you never come out anyway the sound stopped and they the trance lifted and they all went back to their bathrooms. Now, on the way round, there's hoardings here and on this side. This side of the picture was bush. You can go bush. And I wondered why people were being ushered by this cult-like image of these two women, like what they dress like Gloraville, with clothes to their wrist and to their ankles dresses. Little flowers on them. They were ushered. They had been watching the parade. This is a bathroom dream. And they got ushered and there was a sound. That's what made them come out of their bathroom. I was a witness. There was gossiping woman in the kitchen. The sound. And they're all on the road. Like the apocalypse where everyone's on the road. The scenes in the movies. Walking. Climbed up a scaffold. Were watching a parade. They thought they were different. Because they were looking from the outside like an arena. And they're on the road level. They're looking at the road level. They could see, we could see the Tarsio. I climbed up. I had glory on my shoulder. We watched the parade coming down. It was like marching bands. It was speaking to me. It was marching girls. Because I used to be a marching girl. One of them, they were young. They turned to me and did some marching steps. I saw one very clearly. She's only about 13. Then there was a band like a male band with drums and trumpets, which we have in New Zealand, but you have your own version in America. There's always a marching band in a parade, is there not? The Lord was speaking to me about my past experiences. He knew what I would know, and I know it's a parade. And you're watching. Glory fell off my shoulder. I came back up. I missed something. No one would tell me what it was and I ended up in a different place because it was packed full of people watching. Truth is detectives on the internet, no doubt. Then suddenly a stairway 
like I've been in construction on the outside of a, a building, say five stories. We never built anything more than five stories in, in Christchurch after the earthquakes. Coming down, there was a woman there. I knew her. I loved her dearly. It was the church, but it was a false church, and I grasped her in a loving hug like the love and compassion of Jesus, lifted her off the ground, but she was a deceiver. She looked good. There was another one at the bottom of the scaffold. She was more obvious to pick, like an old, she had this mean look. And then we went round. Now, as I was walking round, I was thinking, why there were, we could go bush, we could get out. We didn't have to go. We didn't have to follow them. They were only ushering us. They weren't, didn't have guns on us. And there were gaps in the hoardings. And why, I was thinking, why aren't they going? I knew that it was somewhere we didn't want to go. But no, we all went in here and I'm in the back watching them and the sound stopped and they all went back to their bathrooms. Now it's called the bathroom dream. Then later I've had the communist invasion. Oh, there's no communist invasion. Well, there is. What do you think this is? What do you think this is? What do you think the behaviour of everyone is now Marxist, socialist, communist invasion. It's already started. Yeah, it's World War Three. That's after my brother's death. Acceleration. We can see World War Three, but then don't forget Crimea, two thousand fourteen. You can see God only gives me a couple of lines, and I have complete understanding of the truth. I do. So I've warned people when they weren't listening and that was like a false flag in terms we got to go back. Do you have another chance? No. Are there sons and daughters who have been, spe been speaking to? Yes. Are they now silent? Yes. I'm pretty silent now. Am I not? Look at the videos. Hardly any. I'm talking about this shape. It was all over that bag of Jeffries, and when I pulled it out of my shed, a whole lot of spider carcasses fell out. Now, I never knew about this, but I was building the fence with the horse boy. Remember the horse boy? He's switching out the angels. He betrayed me and left. Well, now his son, his father has showed up to help. His name is Pete. We're building a fence. We're building a fence. We've got 50 metres done. We're putting barbed wire on the top. The Lord said prepare. He said prepare. Who's preparing? You think you're sweet, you think you're safe. You haven't been told to prepare. Oh, the Lord will... Well, Rick Joyner saw them running around. Running around like Woodstock. Those believers. Thinking they can get a free ride on the grace of God when they haven't repented, when they haven't been through the fire. The fire's coming, judgment comes to the church. We all agreed on that shortly. <clears throat> so anyway, these are my, that's my brother. There was a couple of photos. There's my mother, my brother. He looks like he's hanging on a cross, doesn't he? There's no accidents on the stones. We're sister, a big sister. I wasn't born. I was born there though. That's a tower town. There's my big brother. A big brother. <laughs> they look wee, that's why I'm saying wee. <laughs> Got on the dick. Anyway, it's my sister. I've just realised looking at it that she manifests as a clown now. They start she looks like a clown. 
I had another image of her where it's even more obvious. A clown. Can you see it? She's doubled down. She's going to hell. I love her. This is my husband, Marty. He's not. This is me. I'm declaring it in the name of Jesus. This is my daughter, Emily. He's not. This is my brother, Jeffrey. He's in. He's gone home with, he's with the Lord. And this is my son, Joshua. And this is his ex-girlfriend, who he's not with anymore. Well, she goes home, and the one he's with does not. And he won't speak to me because I told him. He won't speak to me because I told him. It's going to be a testimony. And they're the only pictures that were worth keeping and it just happened to be in a dog album. So I'll keep those in the treasure chest. There was some motorbike, a classic motorbike book. I don't know if this is significant, but that's the year. July... 1985 number 66 i think that sounds a bit significant and notice the price four 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 dollars forty there's no accidents or mistakes three dollars in the usa there you go there you go abaddon so why has he got a book about hats i thought my goodness why has he got this book about hats well it's a milliner from New Zealand. This the early years. Now, this is where he was growing up. It's a place called Glenorchy. I, that's his family, look at the date, 1923. Glenorchy had a lot of tourists coming through and he watched the fashion. He ended up being a milliner. There's the old picture. Okay, Glenorchy was a mining town. There's gold here. The early years. So he'd watch the boats come in. He'd watch, these were called buses and they'd go up to a place called Paradise. And he would watch the clothing they wore. They must have been the richest of the rich coming from overseas. In 1820, a tourist destination. See the pub? Now I know why. My husband and I, on our bikes, went to visit some friends. Sally Ann, whom I've known since I was 12. Who, Jeff Reed, she's in this testimony. Jeffrey F-U-C-K, one of my friends. He actually went out with two of my friends. The night that he had the devil put his foot on the accelerator and try and kill him was all over my other girlfriend, Cheryl White, whom he slept with and broke up with and then skited about in the pub. And I'm not kidding, there were seven white brothers, her uncles there, that tried to smash my brother in. He picked up a pool cue and he dropped a lot of them, got in the car, and the devil had his foot on the accelerator. It's a testimony. So the other girl he slept with, they're a year older than me, was Sally Ann. Sally Ann has a partner. The four of us went on our motorbikes to this pub. It's still standing. And when we come in the entrance, there were some guys hanging out outside and they tried to pick a fight with Marty and her boyfriend. It was quite tense. That's what this reminded me of. So anyway, why would he have a book? There's the Hocken Library in Dunedin. Oh gosh, I don't know if that's still standing. I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there we go, New Zealand history.
What is it about hats? Well, I tell you, oh, <clears throat> you know how the mean, and it is translated as the mean in the Bible. The mean wear hats. That's what the Lord told me. But the hats he showed me were these. And this uh, milliner was interested in men's and women's hats. He ended up working with the Queen's milliner for a visit to New Zealand in, it says on the back, you could read that. There we go. 1953, the Queen came to visit, and Lindsay, his name is, worked with her milliner. And you could imagine that made him famous. And he designed all the hats for the elite here in New Zealand that were there. And he had a, a rich social life, and he was worth writing about. This woman wrote about him. She worked with him. So there you go. He had that book. Why would he have that book? Now, Lord, show me the picture of the men with the hats. Oh, oh it's a pity I didn't turn it over at the time. There we go. There we go. Look! He's got a ribbon in it. a live testament he's got a ribbon in it now the ribbon won't be here because the information I need to read is here on this page page 61 that's how come I know see the hat now the hat that the Lord showed me was black. Men without hats. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Men without hats, that's what we're looking for. So the hat is significant. It's symbolic. It's a covering on your head, is it not? Ooh, look at that one looking at us. Yuck. Yuck. Can you discern? Can you see it? Can, do you see it? So let me just sum up. I was out there working on the fence. And I said about these this hive shape that was on this bag and how the little spiders fell out. I can go and show you. Okay, let's go and have a look at them. Don't make these things up. Happened two days ago. He told me what they were. It's a type of bee. It's called it's like a it's called a bee. I don't know if it is a bee. And what it does is it gets spiders so it was here, the bag was here. Right. Here we go. They catch spiders. Ooh. That could have a pupae on it. Look at that. And they put them in this hive thing. I'll show you some more. They all fell on the ground, you see. And I stood on them thinking that they were alive. Doesn't matter what size they are. Well, there's two. That's one with the pupae. So they're little spiders and they trap them in. And then they lay their eggs in it. And the pupae eat the spider. And that's how it grows. And it's a type of bee. 
I wonder if it's the one that I saw. It's like a bee, it's like a fly that had that marking like on that video. You know, with that cross on it. Well, what I want to tell you now is that he's revealed himself in creation and you're as good as one of those when you go down. Well, you were like the spider being eaten from the inside out. Do you understand? You are like the spider being eaten from the inside out. Your food for the bug. So that's what the Lord showed me. It's a little bit like what Click scene. The little, um, I think it's ants, is it? They get those little mites. That's us. And they keep us underground so we don't know what's going on. And we think that's our world. We think that's all there is. There's more than that. And there's a train coming. And there's two types of trains. There's Cat Stevens, the the peace train, the one that turned up here in the after the L blah 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 or mosque event the kickoff event the one that took all your guns and caused what we would call a coalition of leaders to discuss what happens on Facebook and Twitter and misinformation all started from that kickoff event in New Zealand and the response of Jacinda with the hijab hijab jab so this is his bag and that's where it takes me because they're all on here and I got to the bottom of it Pulled out some frames, some CDs. There's not one throw-out CD. Every CD that my brother collected, I had to win. The only bad one was the Christmas special one, which ended up out there in the duck pond trying to scare away birds. Do you know what the last thing in here was? I'd already gone through DVDs and thrown them in the bin, but there just happened to be one at the bottom. My sister packed these, and she said, I'll just take them. She didn't want to deal with it. Well, I'm dealing with it a year later, and the Lord's speaking. Well, I opened up, couldn't see what it was. No cover. There is a train coming. It's like there is a storm coming. It's not the peace train, Cat Stevens. It's the Crunchy Gold Train. Cadbury Crunchy Bar did an awesome ad. It's classic. And it is the old route from Christchurch to the West Coast, a train route. We still have it there. It still runs. And it's a war. It's like the history of America. There are Indians and there are, um, are all sorts of uh, characters. There's a sheriff and there's a deputy. Ask Click about the deputy. The Antichrist is a deputy. He's been deputised. He's been instructed to do what he's doing. Yeah, by the Lord. He's his servant. He's really just a slave. And there are all sacrifices going under the bus. We are the bus. We are the victors. That's why they're working so hard to take us out. But that won't happen until it's the God's, it's until it's the Lord says it's the right time. Just like Jesus said. <coughs> and same with the demons. They won't leave until it's their time. Just like Legion said to Jesus, What do you hear? What do you want with us? Lord, they knew who he was. It's not our time yet. It's all in God's timing, not fucking yours. And that's your Jezebel witchcraft. Everything has to be in their time, doesn't it? 
Well, I've learned a lot about time. And what's in this bag confirms time. Time is on our side. Yes, it is. Time is on our side. Yes, it is. Rolling Stones, <laughs> like Clex says. They think they rolled us. Some of us are turned up and dangerous. Because we've got things to do for the Lord and we won't leave them until we've done it. We will not go home without you because we're looking for the harvest. And Jesus came not for the righteous, not for the ones with the hats. He came for the sinner. So if you're a self-righteous mean in a hat, let this be a warning. Because he's looking for the men without hats. Throw your hat. Do they not throw their hats when the ship leaves? Because we're going home and here's the confirmation. Look at that. Look at that. Hot pink, hot pink. Look at that. It's all pink from here, guys. It's all pink from here. And it's train. Guarantee this is a concert of train that the Lord showed me when I went over to Ashburton because my daughter's father had a stroke on the 17th and I went to Ashburton to help her. She chose not to go and see him and the Lord had told me he would die and he's dead. Yes, he's dead. And she doesn't need it, but there's three siblings. He's had three children. She's got a two older stepbrothers. I know their story because I met him seven years after his marriage had... had I met him... 12 years, 14 years. His son was 14 by the time I left and got saved in 1994. His son was 14 and his name is Casey Jail. Don't ever call your child Jail because that's where he ended up. And there's another one called Jess and he was conceived because... These things happen when you're a single man boarding with a single mother. And that's all she was to him. And Casey's mother was special. Her name was Anya. She's Dutch. And she's special to me because she's the one I rung up because I only knew one Christian. And I asked her to take me to church. And she had already prayed for me and the Lord had said I was pegged. Well, Brian told me what pegged means. Peg means it's when it's what a man says when they actually pick up a chick and take them home and screw them. They say, oh, I pegged this woman. Well, isn't that humorous that the Lord said that to Anya? Because we are the bride. Are you pegged? <laughs> are you pegged? Because you should know about the two trains. Because one's got gold in it and gold is souls. 320. 5.55, go and have a look at Clegg's testimony, he's confirmed it. It's the briefcase, Pulp Fiction, they're trying to hide the combination. 5.55, that's when my daughter was born. We may get an hour's heads up, but I, because I've already pantomimed it, what would you do in your last hour, or 53 minutes? It's taken you probably five minutes before it happened. Some of you. The thing is, he's not going to tell you you're on a need to know basis and you need to trust him. So don't go making up shit and getting on the internet and telling us something that's a lie because we can see you and so can the Lord. And the reason we see you is because the Lord looks through our eyes. Don't come against God's anointed. What you want to be is that person. Because it's great. 
I know it's not nice to see people dying on the left and the right, but I'm telling you now, if you can't practice being in the presence of the Lord and you can't celebrate, Eric's talking about it. I'm going to link his video. He saw himself crying and weeping when he saw it all go down, and it will be suddenly. And if I could just get him and tell him the Lord doesn't want him to do that because he won't be in faith. You have to celebrate. That's what they do in heaven. Think about it hard. Is your faith that strong that you can celebrate? Like not focus on the illusion and the things that are going on around you? Because you will start thinking it's an injustice where it's just. It is just. God is a good God. He loves us. But this is just. And he knows who's dying. And he's known who's died throughout history. He knows their hearts. And in the Bible, in the Old Testament, that's the same God we serve, same Jesus. Where, like Eric said, Saul made the mistake of not killing everyone. Don't let your flesh have the better of you and have sympathy on them. Because his judgment is final and he's judging the earth and we're at the end. What train are you going to be on? Because don't expect it to be peaceful. It's like the Cadbury Gold Train. It's an ad. You can Google it. And I know that the Lord showed me it when I was eight years old. I saw it. I saw one character on that train, and it was the priest with the glasses. See that look? The two zeros? That's a pair of glasses. He had his eyes looking down at his Bible and he had a hat on like in the book. He's a religious prick. And like Eric said, the Lord God is not going to spend time arguing and justifying his word and what he said and from what spirit he comes, he, he does these miracles by. Because they're all condemned and so are you for blasphemy of the holy spirit when you accuse someone who's moving in the holy ghost in the spirit of god of being as jesus was accused of moving in the spirit of bezelbub i know who bezelbub is because i married a man who was taken by bezelbub and it was before we were married we were engaged and he came and asked me to pray for him because he was having nightmares. And after he left, because he was at peace, I heard those flies. I heard them in the spirit around me. And the Lord showed me then it was Bezelbub. Why did I continue to marry him? Because I believe the Lord had authority over Bezelbub. That's what I believed. And I believe that it's been credited to be his righteousness and I've suffered a lot by marrying someone like that and he did try and take my children and he thinks he's one Bezelbub he thinks he's one and he has Jezebel he has Madonna that's his wife his mother mother-in-law she thinks she's one because my three children are not following the Lord apparently but they haven't won Do you know how to save your family? Do you know how to hear from the Lord? Be obedient. Be obedient. Look at that, just like that whole statement. That priest looked up from his glasses and he whipped off his collar and he had a gun under his Bible. He was after the gold. So look out for the gun. Clint Eastwood smoking gun because they actually can't do anything with it and in the end did he get the gold go and have a look at the ad did he get the gold no the one who sat quietly in the front of the train at peace the wee old lady who was knitting she pulled the cord to stop the train everyone cracked their head open and the treasures fell open in front of her and she's holding the gold bars because we get to take the harvest because we 
who have found in faith. Do you want to be a harvester or do you just want to go home? Because if you just want to go home, you're not a harvester and you're not even part of the harvest. Somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, the train line, you got off that train and you decided you wanted to be on the peace train. I just want peace. I just want to get the hell out of here. Well, you will not find peace from now on. And the Lord will curse you. Because you do not follow him and you do not know his heart. Because his heart is for the gold, the souls. It's the only resource here worth taking. Your soul's been saved. Why are you not wanting to see others saved? Jesus died for you. It's just the gospel. There's nothing strange about it. But you can't see, and you can't hear, just like Eric says. He has the scriptural references. He's a teacher. Click is a teacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm not pretending to be a teacher. Don't look at me expecting me to teach because I am a testifier. I am a witness of the Lord's goodness, his grace, his mercy. And his severity. He is severe. And the sword is for cutting. And train is a band. And this is a song that the Lord has shown me. And it's now in the Pied Piper album. It's not Look at That, but I Googled it. It's called Look at the Sky. Are you looking at the sky? There's a train coming. And not one of you is ready.